Transitioning to the 1980s, some beloved actors unfortunately delivered regrettable performances. Picture god-awful accents, cringe-worthy scenes, and arrogant musicians trying to make a quick buck at the box office. It's challenging to define good acting, but poor acting is instantly recognizable. You can't look away, even when some actors specialize in being bad. Surprisingly, several superstars on this list did terrible acting jobs during the 1980s. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a name that needs no introduction in the world of cinema. Despite being known for his lack of true acting ability, Schwarzenegger has become a beloved figure in the movie industry. Often, he's just being himself on screen, and that's what has made him a household name. Born on July 30, 1947, in Thal, Austria, Schwarzenegger was always destined for greatness. As a young boy, he was fascinated by bodybuilding and began training at the age of 15. By the time he was 20, Schwarzenegger had already won the Mr. Universe title, which marked the beginning of his successful bodybuilding career. Schwarzenegger's foray into acting began in the early 1970s when he appeared in several low-budget films. However, it was his role in the 1982 film Conan, the Barbarian that catapulted him to stardom. His breakout role came in 1984 with the release of The Terminator, a film that would become a cultural phenomenon and cement Schwarzenegger's status as an action star. Despite his limited acting range, Schwarzenegger's on-screen presence was undeniable. His charisma and physicality made him a natural fit for action roles, and he went on to star in several successful films throughout the 1980s and 1990s, including Predator, Total Recall, and True Lies. Schwarzenegger's success in Hollywood was not limited to acting. In 2003, he became the governor of California, serving two terms in office. During his time in office, Schwarzenegger focused on environmental issues, health care, and education reform. Despite his lack of true acting ability, Schwarzenegger's impact on the movie industry is undeniable. His films have inspired generations of action stars, and his larger-than-life persona has made him a cultural icon. Even today, Schwarzenegger continues to act and remains a beloved figure in Hollywood. In the end, Schwarzenegger's success is a testament to his determination and hard work. From his humble beginnings in Austria to his rise to stardom in Hollywood, Schwarzenegger has always been a force to be reckoned with. And while he may not be known for his acting ability, his on-screen presence and charisma have made him a beloved figure in the world of cinema. Patrick Swayze, while best known for his iconic role in Dirty Dancing, was not immune to less than stellar reviews in his film career. Born on August 18, 1952, in Houston, Texas, Swayze started his journey in the world of dance and acting at a young age. However, not all of his performances were met with critical acclaim. In films like Roadhouse and Next of Ken, Swayze's acting was criticized for being wooden, leading to rising nominations. Roadhouse, a 1989 action film, saw Swayze play a cooler-than-thou bouncer, but his performance was panned by critics. Similarly, Next of Kin, a 1989 action thriller, was met with mixed reviews, with Swayze's acting being a particular point of contention. Despite these setbacks, Swayze's career was marked by his undeniable charm and charisma, which made him a fan favorite. His performances in Dirty Dancing and Ghost remain some of the most memorable in cinema history. In Dirty Dancing, Swayze played Johnny Castle, a dance instructor who falls in love with a young woman from a wealthy family. His performance was met with critical acclaim and the film became a cultural phenomenon. In Ghost, Swayze played Sam Wee, a murdered banker who tries to protect his girlfriend from harm. The film was a box office hit and Swayze's performance was widely praised. Swayze's career was marked by his dedication to his craft and his ability to captivate audiences. Despite the occasional misstep, his contributions to the world of film and dance will always be remembered. Sadly, Swayze passed away on September 14, 2009, after a battle with pancreatic cancer. His legacy lives on through his work, which continues to inspire and entertain audiences to this day. Madonna's foray into acting during the 1980s may not have been as successful as her music career, but it was not without its moments of promise. Despite being a charismatic pop star, Madonna's acting performances were often overshadowed by poor scripts and direction. In her first film, A Certain Sacrifice, released in 1985, Madonna played a cult leader who kidnaps a man and forces him to have sex with her and her followers. The film received negative reviews, 
with critics panning Madonna's acting as amateurish and the script as poorly written. Later that same year, Madonna starred in Desperately Seeking Susan, a comedy about a bored housewife who becomes obsessed with a free-spirited woman named Susan. Although the film received mixed reviews, Madonna's performance was praised by some critics who noted her natural charisma and ability to hold her own on screen. However, Madonna's next film, Shanghai Surprise, was a critical and commercial failure. Released in 1986, the film starred Madonna and her then-husband, Sean Penn, as missionaries in China during the 1930s. Critics panned the film's poor direction, weak script, and lackluster performances, with Madonna's performance being singled out as particularly wooden. In 1987, Madonna starred in Who's That Girl, a comedy about a woman who is released from prison and sets out to clear her name. The film was a critical and commercial failure, with critics noting Madonna's limited acting range and the poor quality of the script. Despite these setbacks, Madonna continued to act in films throughout the 1990s and 2000s with varying degrees of success. While her acting performances may not have been as critically acclaimed as her music career, Madonna's charisma and natural screen presence were undeniable even in her less successful films. Faye Dunaway, once a highly acclaimed actress, experienced a decline in her career during the 1980s. Known for her powerful and commanding performances, Dunaway's reputation took a hit with a string of lackluster films during this decade. Two notable mentions are Supergirl and The Wicked Lady. In Supergirl, Dunaway played the role of Selina, a sorceress with evil intentions. Despite the film's poor reception, Dunaway's performance was singled out as one of the few bright spots. However, it was not enough to save the movie from being a critical and commercial failure. In The Wicked Lady, Dunaway took on the lead role of Lady Skelton, a wealthy and manipulative woman who leads a double life as a highwaywoman. The film was a remake of a 1945 movie of the same name, and Dunaway's performance was criticized for being over the top and lacking subtlety. The film was panned by critics and failed to make an impact at the box office. These two films marked a low point in Dunaway's career and she struggled to regain her former status as a top-tier actress. Despite these setbacks, Dunaway's contributions to the world of cinema cannot be understated. Her earlier work, including her iconic performances in Bonnie and Clyde in Chinatown, solidified her place in Hollywood history. As we look back on Dunaway's career, it's clear that her talent and skill as an actress have left a lasting impact on the industry. While the 1980s may have been a challenging time for her, her earlier work continues to resonate with audiences today. Chevy Chase, whose real name is Cornelius Crane Chase, was born on October 8, 1943, in New York City. Chase's career in entertainment began as a writer and performer for the National Lampoon Humor magazine, which led to his involvement in the creation of the successful comedy film National Lampoon's Animal House in 1978. Chevy Chase gained national recognition when he became a cast member of the popular sketch comedy show Saturday Night Live in its first season in 1975. Chase quickly became a fan favorite for his deadpan humor and his ability to pull off physical comedy. He is also known for his portrayal of Clark Griswold in the National Lampoon's Vacation film series, which began in 1983. Despite his massive success, Chevy Chase has been criticized throughout his career for playing himself in every role, lacking range and depth in his performances. Critics argue that he relies too heavily on his established comedic persona and fails to challenge himself as an actor. For instance, in his role as the bumbling father Clark Griswold, Chase's performance is marked by his signature brand of humor, but it lacks the nuance and complexity that other actors bring to their roles. Similarly, in his SNL sketches, Chase often played the straight man, delivering dry one-liners and reacting to the more outrageous characters around him. However, it is important to note that Chase's comedic style has resonated with audiences for decades, and his contributions to the world of comedy are undeniable. Despite the criticism, he has remained a beloved figure in the entertainment industry, and his performances continue to bring joy to fans around the world. As Chase himself once said, I'm not a deep guy. I'm just a guy who tries to be funny. And in that regard, he has certainly succeeded. Burt Reynolds was once a dominant force in Hollywood, but his 1980s career saw a significant decline. Despite his earlier box office success, a string of poor performances in flops like City Heat and Rent-A-Cop tarnished his reputation. 
Reynolds' career began in the 1950s, and he quickly became a familiar face on television. He appeared in numerous shows, including Gunsmoke and Riverboat. In the 1970s, Reynolds transitioned to film and became a major star. He appeared in hits like Deliverance, The Longest Yard, and Smokey and the Bandit. However, the 1980s were not kind to Reynolds. His career began to falter, and he found himself in a series of box office disappointments. City Heat, a 1984 film co-starring Clint Eastwood, was a critical and commercial failure. The same year, Reynolds starred in Stroke Rays, another flop. In 1987, Reynolds appeared in Rent a Cop, a film that was panned by critics and ignored by audiences. His performance was widely criticized, and the film was a financial disaster. Reynolds' decline in the 1980s was a stark contrast to his earlier success. He had been one of the biggest stars in Hollywood, but his career was now in freefall. Despite his efforts to revive his career, he was unable to regain his former status. In the end, Reynolds' 1980s career was a disappointing chapter in an otherwise successful career. Despite his earlier success, he was unable to maintain his momentum, and his career suffered as a result. After her breakout role in the popular television show Charlie's Angels, Tanya Roberts' acting career took an interesting turn. She went on to star in a few films that received mixed reviews from audiences and critics alike. One of her most notable roles after Charlie's Angels was in the 1984 film Sheena Queen of the Jungle. The movie was based on a comic book character and followed the story of a young girl who was raised by a tribe in the African jungle and gained superhuman abilities. Despite the film's intriguing premise, it was poorly received by both audiences and critics, with many panning Robert's performance. Roberts also appeared in the 1985 James Bond film A View to a Kill, which was the 14th film in the iconic franchise. She played the role of Stacey Sutton, a geologist who teams up with Bond to take down the villainous Max Zorn. While the film was a box office success, it received mixed reviews, with many critics praising the action sequences and special effects but panning the plot and performances. Despite the mixed reception to her films, Tanya Roberts remained a popular actress throughout the 1980s and 1990s. She continued to appear in various TV shows and movies, leaving her mark in the world of entertainment. John Travolta's acting career in the 1980s didn't quite reach the same heights as his work in the 1970s. His performance in the film Staying Alive, the sequel to the successful Saturday Night Fever, was met with criticism. The movie failed to capture the magic of its predecessor, and Travolta's acting was seen as subpar. In addition to staying alive, Travolta starred in the romantic comedy Two of a Kind alongside actress Olivia Newton-John. The film was a box office disappointment and received mixed reviews. Travolta's acting was once again criticized, with many feeling that he was unable to recapture the charm and charisma that had made him a star in the previous decade. Despite these setbacks, Travolta continued to work throughout the 1980s, appearing in a number of films. However, it wasn't until the 1990s that he would once again find success on the big screen. With roles in films such as Pulp Fiction and Get Shorty, Travolta reminded audiences of his talent and versatility as an actor. In conclusion, while the 1980s were a challenging period for John Travolta's acting career, he was able to bounce back and find success in the following decade. His earlier work, including his breakout role in Saturday Night Fever, remains some of his most iconic and enduring performances. Sylvester Stallone, a name synonymous with the iconic character Rocky Balboa, has had a career that is as fascinating as it is varied. However, not many people know that Stallone's journey in the 1980s was marred by several poor performances, which led to him winning multiple Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst Acting. Born on July 6, 1946, in New York City, Stallone's early life was far from easy. He was born with a facial nerve disorder, which caused paralysis in the lower left side of his face, leading to his distinctive speech and appearance. Despite these challenges, Stallone pursued his passion for acting and writing, and his hard work paid off when he wrote and starred in the 1976 blockbuster Rocky. However, the success of Rocky was followed by a string of poorly received films in the 1980s, including Rhinestone, Cobra, and Over the Top. These films received negative reviews from critics and audiences alike, and Stallone's acting was widely criticized. As a result, he won several Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst Actor during this period. 
Despite these setbacks, Stallone continued to work in the industry and eventually made a comeback with the release of Rocky Balboa in 26. The film received positive reviews and Stallone's performance was praised by critics. He also went on to reprise his role as John Rambo in the fourth installment of the Rambo franchise, which was released in 28. Stallone's career is a testament to his resilience and determination. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks, he has continued to work in the industry and has delivered some memorable performances. However, it is important to remember that even the most successful actors have had their fair share of failures and setbacks. In the case of Sylvester Stallone, his poor performances in the 1980s serve as a reminder that even the most talented individuals can experience setbacks in their careers. After gaining popularity in the music industry during the 1970s, Olivia Newton-John ventured into acting in the following decade. However, her foray into film during the 1980s was marked by two major setbacks. The first was the 1980 musical film, Zanadu, where she starred alongside Gene Kelly and Michael Beck. Despite its star-studded cast and a budget of over 12 million, the film was a critical and commercial failure. Zanadu's poor reception led to Newton-John receiving her first Golden Raspberry Award nomination for Worst Actress. The second misstep in her acting career was the 1983 romantic comedy film, Two of a Kind, where she starred alongside John Travolta. The film was a retelling of the biblical story of Adam and Eve, with Newton-John and Travolta playing the lead roles. Despite the film's promising concept and star power, it failed to resonate with audiences and critics alike. As a result, Newton-John received her second Golden Raspberry Award nomination for Worst Actress. These two major flops in Newton-John's acting career during the 1980s earned her a reputation for being a part of box office failures. However, it is worth noting that Newton-John's contributions to the music industry have left an indelible mark with her album and singles topping charts worldwide. Despite the setbacks in her acting career, her impact as a singer and songwriter continues to endure. Bo Derrick, an actress who rose to fame in the late 1970s, experienced a shift in her critical reception throughout the 1980s. After her breakout role in the 1979 film 10, where she played the object of a man's obsession, Derrick became a household name. However, her subsequent acting roles in films like Tarzan the Ape Man and Bolero received harsh criticism from film critics. In Tarzan the Ape Man, a remake of the 1932 film, Derek starred as Jane, Tarzan's love interest. Despite the film's poor reception, Derek's performance was not the main focus of the criticism. Instead, the film's lackluster script and direction were the primary targets of negative reviews. Similarly, Derek's performance in Bolero, a film about a woman's sexual journey, was not the main reason for the film's critical panning. The film's explicit content and controversial themes were the main sources of criticism. Despite the negative reviews, Derek remained a popular figure in Hollywood throughout the 1980s. She continued to act in films and television shows and even tried her hand at producing. However, her acting in the 1980s did not live up to the success of her breakout role in 10. In recent years, Derek has reflected on her career and the criticism she received. She has expressed her gratitude for the opportunities she had and has remained a respected figure in the entertainment industry. Throughout her career, Bo Derrick has faced both success and criticism. While her acting in the 1980s was met with harsh reviews, she remains a significant figure in Hollywood's history. Her impact on popular culture and her contributions to the entertainment industry continue to be felt today. Michael Caine's career in the 1980s was a mixed bag, with both significant achievements and questionable film choices. In 1986, Caine won his second Oscar for his role in the film Hannah, and her sisters, directed by Woody Allen. This was a remarkable accomplishment and solidified Kane's status as one of Hollywood's most talented actors. However, not all of Kane's films during this decade were well received. In 1987, he starred in the critically panned Jaws the Revenge, which was widely panned by both critics and audiences. The film was the fourth and final installment in the Jaws franchise, and Kane's involvement in the project was seen as a misstep in his otherwise impressive career. Another questionable film choice for Kane during this time was Blame It on Rio, a romantic comedy that was released in 1984. 
The film was criticized for its poor writing and lackluster performances, and it failed to make a significant impact at the box office. Despite these missteps, Kane remained a respected and in-demand actor throughout the 1980s. He continued to work consistently, appearing in a variety of films that showcased his versatility and talent. In conclusion, Michael Caine's career in the 1980s was marked by both highs and lows. While he won his second Oscar and continued to be a sought-after actor, he also made some questionable film choices that were not well received. Despite these challenges, Caine remained a respected and talented performer, and he continued to be a significant presence in the world of film. Keanu Reeves, born on September 2, 1964, in Beirut, Lebanon, first gained recognition for his role in the 1989 comedy film Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. His portrayal of the lovable, dare-headed Ted Logan was well-received and helped establish him as a rising talent in Hollywood. However, as Reeves' career progressed, he became known for often playing similar characters in a series of action films. Some critics argue that this led to repetitive performances and a lack of diversity in his roles. Despite this, Reeves has remained a popular and bankable actor, with many fans praising his charisma and on-screen presence. One of Reeves' most iconic roles is that of Neo in the Matrix trilogy. The films, released between 1999 and 23, were a massive success and helped solidify Reeves' status as a leading man. His portrayal of Neo a hero fighting against a dystopian future controlled by machines resonated with audiences and cemented his place in film history. Despite the success of the Matrix films, Reeves' career has not been without its ups and downs. He has faced criticism for his performances in some films, and his later career has been marked by a mix of both commercial and critical failures. However, Reeves has continued to work steadily, appearing in a variety of films, and even trying his hand at directing. In recent years, Reeves has experienced a resurgence in popularity thanks in part to his role in the John Wick film series. The action-packed films have been a hit with audiences and have helped remind people of Reeves' talent and appeal as an actor. In conclusion, while Keanu Reeves' career has been marked by both successes and challenges, there is no denying his impact on the film industry. From his breakout role in Bill and Ted's excellent adventure to his iconic portrayal of Neo in the Matrix trilogy, Reeves has left his mark on Hollywood and continues to be a beloved and respected figure in the world of film. Brooke Shields, even from a young age, was no stranger to the spotlight. She began her career as a child model at the tender age of 11 months, and by the time she was a teenager, she had already become a household name. However, her early acting career in the 1980s was marked by some missteps, despite her fame as a model. One of her most notable roles during this time was in the film The Blue Lagoon, where she played a young girl who becomes stranded on a deserted island with a boy her age. The film was controversial due to its depiction of nudity and sexuality, and Shields' performance received mixed reviews. Critics praised her beauty and naturalness, but many felt that her acting was lacking. Similarly, her performance in the film Endless Love was also met with criticism. The film, which was a romantic drama, told the story of a young couple whose love is threatened by their family's disapproval. Shields played the female lead, but her acting was once again criticized for being wooden and lacking emotion. Despite these early setbacks, Shields continued to act and eventually found success in both film and television. She starred in several successful TV shows, including Suddenly Susan and Lipstick Jungle, and appeared in numerous films, including The Seventh Sign in Black and White. Throughout her career, Shields has also been an advocate for various causes, including women's health and education. She has been open about her own struggles with postpartum depression and has written several books on the subject. In conclusion, while Brooke Shields' early acting career in the 1980s was marked by some poor performances, she has since gone on to have a successful and varied career in both film and television. Her advocacy work and willingness to share her own experiences have also made her a respected and admired figure in the industry. After gaining notoriety for her chilling performance in the 1973 horror classic, The Exorcist, Linda Blair's career in the 1980s took a different turn. She became known for her roles in a series of exploitation horror films that failed to showcase her true potential. In 1981, Blair starred in Hell Night a slasher film that followed a group of pledges who must survive the night in a haunted house. 
Despite the film's attempt to capitalize on the popularity of the horror genre, it received mixed reviews and was criticized for its poor acting and lackluster plot. The following year, Blair appeared in Savage Streets, a vigilante film that told the story of a high school student who seeks revenge on a gang that raped her deaf sister. The film was panned by critics for its excessive violence and gratuitous nudity, with Blair's performance being singled out as particularly weak. Despite the critical failure of these films, Blair continued to work throughout the decade, appearing in a number of low-budget horror and action movies. However, her post-exorcist career failed to live up to the promise of her early success, and she struggled to shake off the negative reputation that came with her roles in exploitation films. Despite these setbacks, Blair remained a fixture in the entertainment industry, transitioning to roles behind the camera as a producer and animal rights activist. Her contributions to the world of film and television, as well as her advocacy for animal welfare, have left a lasting impact on the industry and beyond.